Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca, I'm a fish biologist, an ichthyologist and also a PhD student. I specialise and study the evolution of lower cards catfishes, also known as plecos or whiptail catfishes within the aquarium trade. And I've got quite a lot of experience within the aquarium trade and as a fish keeper. But today I'm going to talk about fishes that take a bit more work or a little bit more difficult in the aquarium um, hobby or freshwater hobby and maybe more for the enthusiast that's going to put a little bit more work into it. So there will, there's probably other lists that I haven't actually looked up on this and most of them are more fishes that aren't entirely for the beginner and sometimes it's based on myths and sometimes it's based on other things but Sometimes also the idea of difficulty is a little bit difficult to gauge because uh, as a beginner you can go into those more difficult fishes. It really depends on what and what skills you need that you might learn through research or over time. I do not count just over time you absorbing things enti entirely as being as valid as being able to research. So it's a little bit more of a complicated um, topic and I didn't want it to I don't want it to be simple because I don't want people to think that just because they've had one to five years in fish keeping that they suddenly without having done any research they suddenly know everything they need to know which isn't true because research is so important so um, I'll go on to maybe the first one in a little bit uh, so it there's so many just difficult species in the trade that we don't really talk about and difficulty isn't always entirely understood. Sometimes they're just known to maybe fail in the hobby or not do so well uh, and they're just labelled as difficult maybe without entirely understanding why. And it's not entirely like there's loads of fishes that get this label and often in freshwater unlike in the marine hobby they're not labelled as difficult they're labelled as having short lifespans which might be Sometimes true in the case of like annual killifishes, but not true in the case of all fishes. So, the I'm going to put into categories of why fishes might be difficult, which maybe will help you gauge of what you need or how you're going to keep them. And I must say, my first fish was a Pistogramma cacodoides which as some people might not say is a good first fish. A big factor of difficulty is whether you're actually enthusiastic to keep those fishes. If you're not enthusiastic to keep those fishes, you won't do so well, you won't do the research, you won't have your heart into keeping them. And that's why it's really important to actually be enthusiastic about what you're keeping, regardless of difficulty or perceived difficulty. Um, some fish just take more work and if you're enthusiastic about them you're going to put that little bit more work into um, or sometimes it might be worth thinking about how they could be kept in the community which is difficult we can't really do with fishes like puffers or stuff like that but although they're quite easy I would say to keep um, the other factor is that when asking about difficulty of fishes is that um, difficulty really changes on your uh, depending on your perspective uh, one person's difficult fish is not another person's difficult fish and this depends on uh, how you keep fish, what fish you're used to, um, sort of your knowledge which is really difficult to gauge, there is no like official gauge um, of knowledge and also maybe some aspects of experience that you can apply which takes knowledge but not experience as in it just appears in your mind is experience that you kind of have to force yourself to do so just keeping fish won't give you that experience really the other factor is as you get more knowledgeable you maybe forget about how it was to keep fish back at a certain point and those problems that they would encounter just become intuitive. So, which actually I could do a video on because I have um, argued it before that more experienced or knowledgeable fish keepers maybe just not actually give advice as much to beginners. But anyway, so one category of fishes that are actually more challenging to keep or difficult to keep and this is really broad but these are fishes that you actually need to research but not actually research 
on aquarium websites, these are fishes that require scientific research, as in looking at the literature, or maybe some websites might be good, like Planet Catfish. Occasionally, seriously, fish it is a little bit of a short list and hasn't been updated in a long time. And maybe other sort of resources might um, give hints. But these are fishes that don't have that much about them, um, like hobby sources. They might not have a common name, they might not have an L number, C, well they probably have a CW number, maybe not a C number. They might not even have a scientific name, but it makes them really difficult to actually research and you have to apply a lot more knowledge. So these are ones that you need this sort of scientific level of skill and therefore more scientific level of difficulty. And there are quite a few fishes that might fit into this category. And this can be anything from a wide range of lore cards, so plecos, whiptail catfishes, where there might be completely nothing on. And you have to look at the scientific literature, all where um, what's written is kind of generic, and particularly where that people are struggling with keeping them in the trade but don't really know why or keeping them in the hobby. So that might be Platystachus caltophorus, the eel-tailed um, eel banjo catfish people struggle with but don't entirely know why. And it could be, so I am always think of catfish examples but there's probably loads of other cichlids. There's um, more specialised fishes. It's fishes that you don't really see too often but are require actually looking into scientific, scientific literature, into the ecology and factors like that as to why they're difficult. A uh, good genus there would be Chyloglanus, so that's a Mochokid, um, Mochokidae, um, which is most closely related to Synodontis, uh, very rare but they do come in. There's um, some, uh, there's quite a few other fishes, I would say maybe even some of the well better but Anabantoid societies I think maybe quite good there. Um, there are really good books on fishes like that, um, particularly from certain clays like catfishes, um, cichlids and stuff like that, but you still will have to delve into scientific literature which doesn't make them easy and therefore not if, you're, if you don't have the ability to research they're going to be difficult to keep. So the next group of fishes because that one was a little bit broad and I sort of want to start with it because that's the next level of fish keeping where you actually have to start really developing that scientific knowledge. It's fishes that are difficult to feed and I'm crossing off piscibles here although I will never recommend feeding live fish. Um, Sometimes they can be catered for with a little bit of work whether it be frozen food, uh, small live food or factors like that. Um, these are ones which are actually really fussy for feeding and take a lot of work out, uh, work on what they feed on, how they feed, factors like that, and actually matching their diets. So obviously most of my examples are catfishes. The first one, obviously I'm going to go with lower cards because some of them, maybe we don't actually know what they feed on in the world. Some of them, like we it's really difficult to cater for their diets in the world and they won't actually eat what uh, like the closest uh, thing that they would feed on in the wild which is good for them. They might feed on something that ends up with a short lifespan, bloated and they're probably never going to reproduce. And this kind of leads on to a lot of other algivores tend to have this issue. But other than that, you've got like Chyloglanus I mentioned again, so some of the mocha kids. Um, a lot of catfishes fit into this category because there's so many, but they're not always well understood. Um, and another one, which is a really like, rare one, but really tricky to keep is trichomatrids. And they're the only one that does have, um, well they're, they have a, a few members that are not brood parasitic, parasitistic. But they're also parasites, so they might specialise in sort of latching onto a fish, usually around the gills, or some of them are specialists in feeding only on the fins, some of them only feed on scales, some of them only feed on certain invertebrates, which makes them really difficult to keep in captivity. 
and some of the wood cats fall into this too which I cannot remember the family off the top of my head but these are fishes that really take work to what they're to work out what they're feeding on and all of these are not easy to work out what to feed and might actually cost quite a bit of money to feed in the long run so a big one a lot of people love but um like that rec get recommended but probably shouldn't is actually gymnotiform so these are true knife fishes and I'm going to add in memorids here um, so memorids are an African group most closely related to alwana and stuff like that but uh, gymnotiforms are most closely related actually to catfishes and carasins and these this is an exclusively carnivorous group of fishes and they feed mostly on invertebrates, but there are fish uh, piscivores and stuff like that. The invertebrate ones are probably the ones I'm discussing mostly, and they can be really difficult to keep because they can be so specialist in what they feed on, what invertebrate they feed on. You have to try loads of different frozen foods, loads of different live, and just cross off what they they won't eat and what they do eat. There's some examples of easy to keep ones like uh, Tyranotiforms or Apteranotiforms. Apteranotus, no. Tyranotus, which is the uh, black um, black ghost knife fish, Apteranotus, Apteranotus uh, albus. And then there's the, black, uh, the brown knife fish, which is the other one. And they're quite easy to keep. Gymnotus tends to be easier to keep in terms of feeding, but in terms of care, they're very elusive fishes. They won't compete with other fishes. And this is a big factor in feeding, is fishes that won't compete with other fishes, and lower cards fall into that too. So the, when it comes to feeding, there's a load of fishes that just won't compete with anything rapidly because they don't always recognise that thing as food, and they don't naturally compete. They're naturally just foraging and they don't need to fight for food, like little cards, plecos, who will just constantly be grazing. And you could say the same for like discus, uh, corridoridinae and similar. So one thing that maybe isn't that important is fish that maybe are a little bit more specific on parameters. And I am not entirely convinced by all of it. But there are some fishes that require more softer black water, whether it be um, like wild better particularly get mentioned and wild discus. But then I think some of it might need a little bit more understanding or work. Um, wild better I can't really com uh, comment on, um, even licorice glamis. And I'd say if you're going to keep them, do work on matching their wild parameters as much as possible. I believe some of the mouth fooders aren't too bad, but definitely they do take a little bit more work. So basically that's kind of maybe a very short list of things that are difficult about fresh water fishes or going to the next stage. There will be plenty of other fish to add to this list and if you wanted to add your own please do. And there's, yeah, so it's definitely worth always researching anyway. There's plenty of great books to look at, there's plenty of great websites, but keep learning because if you're researching constantly, then you'll be a step ahead of when you see that fish in the store and you might have the tank space and the tank, but you'll know what it is and how to care for it. Otherwise, you can't, not all stores even have internet connection, but otherwise you might not be aware of how to keep that fish and that can lead to failure. There's a lot of difficult freshwater fishes, most of like the majority of what you can keep but might not get mentioned are maybe on the more challenging side, it just never gets mentioned because they might not be that common species. But anyway, I'll end this video here, if you like my videos please comment, like and subscribe and goodbye.